osteoblastic bone disease and renal dysfunction are just two complications of multiple myeloma. We're here to talk about a couple of different approaches to adult patients with evidence of at least one lytic bone lesion. And to do that, we are here to talk to uh, Dr. Nupur Araje, who is an MD and a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and the director of the multiple myeloma program at Massachusetts General. Let's talk about osteolytic bone disease first in these patients and describe the problem for us, why this is a, a major issue. So it is a very big issue for multiple myeloma patients because more than 80% of patients present with osteolytic bone disease. That is in fact one of the pathognomic features of multiple myeloma patients. And if you look hard enough and if you look close enough, I would argue and say that 100% of patients have some element of bone disease to begin with. And the reason it is quite important is if left untreated, Rick, you will end up with a lot of morbidity. There's a lot of skeletal related events that can happen, which includes pain, fractures, cord compression, need for surgery, need for things like kyphoplasties and vertebroplasties. And with that, it's not just the morbidity, but there is data to demonstrate that mortality also increases if you have too many of these bone-related complications. So what you're looking at is uh you're comparing denosumab and zoldanaronic acid. Most people are probably familiar with that second one of those. It's been used quite a bit for bone problems. Describe the, the, uh, the study and exactly why you chose these two agents. So, you know, for as many as, I want to say, 15 or 20 years now, the standard of care has been the use of bisphosphonates, and zoledronic acid certainly has been used by all of us in the multiple myeloma world. Uh, Denosumab is a newer uh, monoclonal antibody. Uh, it can be given subcutaneously, and a very important feature of this is this drug is not renally cleared while all of the bisphosphonates are. And in addition to the bone disease that we just talked about, one of the other big issues with the majority of multiple myeloma patients over their lifetime can in fact be renal dysfunction. And it's as many as about 60% of patients who can end up with some form of renal dysfunction over their lifetime. And that is why we went ahead and compared denosumab with zoledronic acid. Uh, this was done in a very large phase three randomized multicenter study. And I think this is probably one of the largest studies in the myeloma world. 1700. 1700 plus right? It's yeah. 1,722 odd patients. And I think it is an enormous effort because we had 29 countries represented from all over the world wow. uh, and did it in record time. Most times when we do bone disease uh, studies, you know, myeloma is piggybacked onto some of these other cancers like lung cancer, breast cancer, and so on right. and so forth. So good study to get to. So it's a phase three randomized double blind trial. So describe what you've done and what you found. So as you pointed out, 1,700 plus patients, they were randomized in uh, two ways. One, uh, it is a uh, double-blind placebo control trial uh, so that patients got either zoledronic acid or got denosumab every four weeks. The denosumab dose was for, uh, 120 milligrams given subcutaneously. It was a blinded study, blinded to the uh, patient, blinded to the investigator as well because each of the patients also got the placebo and then what the primary endpoint of this study was to look at equivalence between zoledronic acid and denosumab, and that was to look at the first on-study skeletal-related event. What we found in this analysis, in our initial analysis, was that both arms did equally well when it came to an SRE rate. We also tried to see if there was one which was superior to the other, and we did not find that. But what was also very important in this study was there was no survival uh, uh, difference between the two and this is quite important for the myeloma world because if you go back and look at some of the older data with denosumab, part of the reason why denosumab is not yet approved in multiple myeloma was that there was an increase or at least there was a suggestion of an increased risk of death in patients getting denosumab. We therefore controlled in this study for you know simple things like most of these uh, patients were newly diagnosed patients. We controlled for the kind of treatment they were getting whether they were getting a transplant versus not, their risk of disease when we randomized them, and we did not find a survival difference. 
What kind of what kind of side effect profile did these two agents have? Yeah. So before the side effect profile, there's one additional thing which uh, came to us actually as a surprise. And what we also found in a, a kind of a post hoc analysis, it was an exploratory analysis, so not post hoc, uh, but we found a very significant difference in progression free survival. Now PFS being different by about 10 months to me is absolutely striking. Uh, it's great that you bring up the issue of side effects because one of the things we absolutely wanted to look at was uh, patients with myeloma with renal dysfunction oftentimes have more toxicity and we did see that in the zoledronic acid arm so that more toxicities, renal related toxicities because of zoledronic acid which we did not see with denosumab. As far as the other concerning toxicities that we worry about like osteonecrosis with the jaw, they were fairly uh, comparable in both groups of patients. How is denosumab cleared? Uh, so um, not renally and, uh, 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 you know, the good question, I don't think it's hepatic either. It's a subcutaneous it's a monoclonal antibody, but I, I don't know, certainly not renally. So we know for people who have renal problems to begin with, this actually would be an alternative. A safe, a safe alternative and should, in fact, be used in those patients for sure. Now, in terms of where this goes next, you've got 1,700. This is a large phase three trial. What do you think is in the future, the coming months, a uh, year? You know, I think this is going to change practice. So this is a practice changing trial in my mind. This is uh, finally giving us an option of treatment for those patients who have renal dysfunction also. And this, we hope, is going to allow us to register this drug in the treatment of myeloma-related bone disease. And specifically, if the PFS difference holds up, Rick, um, you know, this is going to be used more and more in the myeloma world. Some of this data is panning out in solid tumors as well, for example, breast cancer, etc. When you use bone targeted agents, they have some benefits on the disease outcomes as well. And we think that that might happen with these agents as well. Is this likely to be a, a much more expensive agent? So that's a good question, and I'm sure it's going to be more expensive than zoledronic acid. The reason being zoledronic acid is now generic. Uh, but I do think one has to take into account a whole lot of other issues also. You know, denosumab is given as a subcutaneous shot. Uh, zoledronic acid, you have to have infusion time. You have to have an infusion appointment. So even if the drug in itself doesn't cost a whole lot, you have to balance that with what surrounds the use of a drug like zoledronic acid and sometimes I don't think we look at all of those features and then if I'm going to be seeing such a benefit in terms of uh, uh, disease control also, uh, you know, one might argue that I would pre preferentially use this. The other piece I think is there is a real unmet need in myeloma, specifically in patients who have renal failure and renal failure with a creatinine clearance of less than 30. We have no bone targeted agent which is approved in that context. And although we did not include those patients in this trial, there's ongoing efforts on our part looking at drugs like denosumab in that very patient population, which is a niche patient population, wherein I think denosumab is going to be absolutely critical. Well, congratulations. This is quite a study and uh, quite an accomplishment, too, with such a large study in a short period of time. Uh, good luck, and we should be expecting to hear more from uh, about this drug, correct? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We have from ASCO a wide variety of coverage. Please check online and in print at Ash Clinical News. I'm Rick McGuire.